Hello guys, welcome to Omocha Reviews. Jay here and I hope you'd like the debut of my new avatar. I will be using this for my upcoming reviews moving forward. Anyway, let's talk about the Hayate Liger ZA by Supernova. Super excited to have this. Here's some basic information about this. This is a 172 scale from Supernova. It has free action bases, which I will discuss later on. And it is priced around 25 to 30 US dollars depending where you get it. All right, so just talking about this for uh, this Zoid in particular, I am ecstatic that Supernova gave this really early on this year. I expected this um, to arrive a little early next year, but definitely not this year. But anyway, we we have this right now, and I'm gonna discuss about the cons, the pros, the strengths, the articulation, and also some comparison and some critical information on how to build this kit. So first let's start with the manual. So I just want to show the manual really quickly here. As you can see, it's the same as the Murasami Liger's manual. It's very clear. Uh, all the runners are shown. Uh, the paper is really good. And yeah, you won't get really lost in doing these manual. Uh, in yeah, in following this manual right here. Also, you get a little bit of artwork of the Hayate Liger at the very end of the manual. Very cool. Now let's talk about what you get here. Besides the action base of the Hayate Liger, you get the action base of the Murasami Liger as well. And you also get another uh, set of uh, water slide decals specifically made for the Hayate Liger. Pretty awesome addition, especially the bases considering, you know, uh, the Ligers are really good to pose in action bases. So yeah. Now for the next part of the video, let's just show uh, the action base of the Hayate Liger. So as you can see here, it, uh, this is how the action base looks like. It's obviously the same red as the Hayate Liger. And then it has the name of the Hayate Liger there. And actually this uh, stand right here, you can extend this and make this taller. But uh, I found out this is the best uh, and the optimal height in posing the Liger because it's quite heavy. So next one, we're going to discuss about plastic quality. So the plastic quality, let me just start uh, off with this one because I am so amazed about the improvements of Supernova in doing this kit compared to the Murasami Liger. For starters, the plastic kit there, I think it's the same quality honestly, but the paint job that they gave the Hayate Liger is just way better compared to the Murasami Liger. This is as accurate as we can get into getting a 172 imitation of the Hayate Liger. This just beats uh, Tomi's motorized Hayate Liger by far and you know you can't really be happy with a 1100 ZA aggressive uh, by Kotobukiya. So honestly this is just this just looks amazing. They got everything right from the colors, from the visor, even from the blades. Compared to the Murasami Liger this one is way better in design and plastic quality. I mean look at that. Just awesome colors, the fins, the brown touch, I really like that. I really appreciate that they gave this the brown touch because in the Tomi one, this is actually black, but in the anime, this is uh, actually brown. So, yeah, you can really see that they really put uh, thought into it and that they gave homage to the actual design we saw in the anime. Now, for the next part of the video, I'll talk about the issues. I'll start with the issues first because I know a lot of you guys are, are interested and curious about the issues of this kit. So in my other video about the Hayate Liger, I actually mentioned about me getting worried about the boosters and the visor. And you know what? Guess what? It's actually the boosters and the visor that have the most issues here in my opinion. So number one, the visor is actually very loose. So uh, I'll show you guys here. As you can see, the visor there is separated. Good job by Supernova making two separate visors instead of one. However, it's poorly constructed. As you can see there, the slightest touch will actually dislodge the visor like that. And I'm really touching this. I'm not even like putting any pressure. I'm just really touching it. And it's, yeah, it's uh, popping out so easily. I'm pretty sure once you've assembled this, this, this is gonna pop out in like the next 10 seconds once you've inserted it there. So as you can see how it's constructed, there's actually a bolt in the visor. And if I pop this uh, headpiece out, you can see where it inserts right there. And the funny part is the bolt there actually does not insert into any hole. It just inserts into that space right there, as if you can see. So yeah, this bolt from the visor inserts to that part there, but there is no hole there at all. It's just 
a space where it uh, snugly fits in. So you might be wondering how does this uh, make sense? Well actually it makes sense by through this headpiece right here. You stick this in there and the idea is it will sandwich the bolt into that space right there. Now uh, that could be possible or that could be ingenious if you think about it but the problem is that headpiece is also very loose. So if the headpiece is loose and isn't really tight uh, inserting there then obviously the visor will pop out. So honestly the only way to fix this is to apply glue. I will apply glue with this shortly I just wanted to show you guys how it looks like. So next, uh, I talked about the visor, now I'll talk about the boosters. Now, the boosters could uh, vary in terms of uh, experience here, unlike the visor, which I'm sure uh, is uh, the same for everybody. But I'll just show the boosters here real quick. There's really no problem in the construction of the boosters. As you can see, they're separate. Uh, the boosters are separate, they're not built into one. However, they do have soft booster fin connectors. And what, are, what do I mean by that? If you can see these fins right here, so uh, these are three fins and they rotate like that or they move up and down like that and the reason for them to be able to do that is they have three uh, sort of bolts like three uh, small uh, I guess uh, three small protrusions of plastic so you basically insert the fin in there but the problem is it's as thin as a toothpick so that small uh, bolt inside the boosters where you insert the fins is really really fragile and I actually uh, in my experience just the slightest touch and it actually snapped off so yeah that was really really bad and if you can see here uh, this part right here the uppermost part of this uh, right booster here is not moving anymore because I had to apply glue so be, be very careful with those three bolts in the booster now a little uh, tip here since I was I'm already talking about the boosters as you can see here, this is I took off the armor of the booster. Now in the in the manual, it will instruct you to insert it in a very simple way, basically like this. See that? So they're just telling you to insert it like that. I've been doing that for like a good uh, 15 minutes, and I realized why doesn't why doesn't it fit? It won't fit at all, no matter how hard I press. Then I realize I'm doing it wrong. The manual doesn't tell you this, but you insert it like this first, and then you put it like that. There you go. Simple as that. So a, very, a good tip for those who haven't built the kit yet. The next issue is about parts hitting each other. Now what do I mean by this? So the Hyatt Liger has a number of uh, fins or I guess whiskers here. But the most problematic part are these ones on the head. These ones that look like flames because I think the Liger is based off of a flame in terms of its design. So as you can see, they are very long and they actually touch the boosters right there. And besides that, even this sort of exhaust here that looks like an ear also touches the boosters there. And all of these parts are connected to the head. So what happens is when they get caught with the boosters right there, you basically are left to... Yeah, you, you cannot articulate the head like, like so. As you can see in the video right here, you can't lift it up because there are some parts hitting each other. And worse, uh, when you try to articulate it, some parts may fall off. Uh, such as the visor if you haven't glued the visor like this. So yeah, that's a big weakness of the Hyatt Liger. Now for the next issue, as you can see, I'm holding something small here. This is actually a small part that connects there. It's one of these uh, yellow accents that they gave the Hyatt Liger, which is really good because it mimics the anime really well. But these are, yeah, uh, loose small parts that, you know, they're not a big concern because you can definitely just glue this. But yeah, they do fall off sometimes, so keep that in mind when you're handling the Liger because they do can they have a risk of uh, getting lost given how small they are. So the next part, as you can see right here, the body looks like it has some osteoporosis because the last and final issue is an imbalance on weight distribution. So one glance at the height of Liger and you can see that the body, the upper or the I guess you could say the frontal part of the body has definitely more weight causing the lower body to sag and having yeah basically imbalance in the distribution which gives this a little bit of limitation in articulating the body because of the yeah the weight given by the boosters and the head altogether. 
Now, we've been talking about a lot of issues, but yeah, I will stop my issues at number 5 and I will now discuss the strengths because as many as there are problems with the Hayate Liger, I honestly believe Supernova did an excellent job with this kit because honestly, the Hayate Liger is really complex in design and a complex design means a lot of issues eventually, especially if, you know, this is your first run at it. And props to Supernova because not only did they deliver a great design for the Hayate Liger, but they also learned a lot from their mistakes uh, from the previous kit, which is the Murasame Liger. So I'll first uh, talk about the blade because I think the blade is a good example of it. Now in the Murasame Liger, the, this piece of armor by the leg actually inserts through a slit. But this time around, they created a hole where a bolt of plastic inserts through and thus making it more secured and stable. So another part of articulation here, these whiskers actually move up and down. I'm actually quite surprised they articulated this since I don't think this moved in the anime. But yeah, you can move them. However, it just gets in the way because the shoulder armor is quite thick. So it kind of rubs through uh, there in the shoulder armor. This part right here moves also, as you can see very standard and then uh, this smaller blade here is also well made it's the same as the other one except uh, yeah it's a lot smaller but yeah it's also constructed the same way very very cool I think the plastic that they use is a lot shinier here compared to the Murasame Liger so yeah this goes back to what I said about Supernova learning from their mistakes and really improving upon it really really great for the company to do that so next are the boosters, as you can see here, they move up and down, I've shown this a while ago but I'll show more about it. They move up and down, they move sideways because they have a sort of like a, a ball joint, it's not really a ball joint but sort of like a rotating mechanism that is uh, embedded inside the body, inside the armor of the body right there. As you can see the boosters really do affect uh, these uh, uh, head pieces so I will glue this once I finish the video. Okay, now I'm gonna rotate this and I'll show the fins here. So in the Tomy motorized version, these fins are actually one piece and they extend uh, simultaneously. But for this one, Supernova really went another, uh, another notch here and basically you can extend uh, each fin separately because they, are, they sort of insert in a slot there and you can individually articulate them, which is really cool because again, in the anime, that's how it works. So for the last part, uh, unsurprisingly, the tail is made from copper wire, similar to the Murasame Liger. So yeah, very standard and I really like how, how detailed the tail is because it really looks awesome uh, in this kit right here. For the final video, we'll talk about the comparison. So I have here my very very old and rundown uh, Tomi Takara motorized Hayate Liger back in 2005. It's been 15 years, can you imagine, since we last had a 172 Hayate Liger. And as you can see, I've been raving, raving about the design and it's just night and day. Next up is my Murasame Liger. So if you compare the two, obviously they are both from the same ev evolutionary line. This is like comparing, I don't know, Charmander to Charmeleon. But yeah, if you can see here how simple the Murasame Liger is with the blade being the only thing that's unique about it. You can really tell why there are a lot of issues with the Hayate compared to the Murasame Liger because there are simply more parts with the Hayate Liger and more uh, complex coloration and complex design. So it's really no wonder that if you compare the two, the Murasame Liger will be the easier build uh, compared to the Hayate Liger. Last but not the least, I will be showing you guys here not one of my HMM kits but instead the Mugen Liger from Takara Tomi back in the early 2000s. Now of course this is a motorized kit but yeah I'm really excited that Supernova may finally give us a Mugen Liger to complete this uh, ev evolutionary line and I think the Mugen Liger will be translated by Supernova a lot better compared to the Hayate because it's a lot simpler in design, it's very straightforward. You basically get two giant katanas with the body of the Murasame Liger without the complexities of the Hayate such as its visor, its boosters, and its fins. So really excited for that. That's it for today guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to Omocha Reviews. Thanks for watching, until next time, goodbye.